I want to turn to the, we talked about Marxism. We have, obviously, as, as you're familiar, we have this sort of new philosophy, which is what we can call maybe wokeism, CR, CRT, the intersectionality movement. Um, do you see, is how did this sort of come about? It's obviously taken over major industries. It's It's all the time in the media and the press. It's uh, ubiquitous among college campuses, this kind of uh, racialist ideology. Is this a form of Marxism? Is it neo-Marxist? Is it, uh, you know, like semi-Marxist? Well, how do you make sense of this and where do you think it came from? And do you think it's attached to the yeah, I mean, I, communism? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's particularly useful to think of it as Marxist. Um, I think it's from the same intellectual tradition as Marx. It's definitely influenced by Marx. It's de definitely picked up certain of Marxism's uh, attitudes and, and terminology. But look, uh, you know, Marxism, uh, you know, has failed. It failed intellectually. It failed in a, it, it failed philosophically. Uh, there was, in a sense, a, an attempt to, uh, to uh, revive Marxism and to uh, reorient it that ultimately resulted in postmodernism, which I think is far more the source of this stuff than, than directly Marxism. Marx was very, very concerned about economic classes. He was very, very concerned about creating this uh, utopia that had everything to do with uh, um, you, you know, the, the, the dictatorship of the proletarian, ultimately. And he, he also envisioned a utopia in which people were rich and people did well and, and people pursued happiness. It, it's a bizarre utopia and it's, it's detached from any kind of real reality, but he had certain goals and he was striving towards achievement of something uh, that was very, I think, different than what CRT is and what uh, intersectionality is and what all these things are. I don't, I, you know, Marx himself was a racist um, and, and didn't particularly like um, you know, Jews, certainly didn't like Jews even though he was um, from a Jewish family, uh, you know, he didn't like Slavs. He, he, he didn't like Africans. Uh, I mean, he didn't like a lot of people. He, you know, he wanted, uh, I guess, white, blonde, um, uh, you, you know, proletarian. That was, that was his ideal. And it's, it's so, but his concern was economic. Mm -hmm. uh, pe what people call cultural Marxism is not really Marxism because it, does, it, it, it doesn't really relate to the, the economic class system. It, it, it's egalitarian uh, in a way that even makes Marx looks good. I, I think the philosophy that dominates today's intellectuals is far worse than Marxism. It has no positive goals. Its main thrust is destruction and tearing stuff down and putting people down and, and, and basically uh, destroying. There's no utopia. There's no, there's no goal that we're heading towards. There's no some wonderful place. Uh, there's no recognition of the values that capitalism created, which Marx had. Marx wrote some of the best defenses of capitalism as an economic system and said, but it plays itself out. And what will replace it is, is socialism. But, but he, had, he has a whole thing about how, yes, only capitalism beat people out of poverty. Capitalism was inevitable as, as, the, as the thing that, that, that replaces feudalism. CRT, all these things are basically built on hate, not on anything more than that. And it is, uh, you, know, uh, you know, we talked earlier about morality. So I think CRT, certainly intersectionality, are the culmination of a perverse morality. Uh, if you think about Christian morality, um, then Christian morality is about, uh, you know, at its core, it's about the need to sacrifice for others. Um, the, the highest moral action that you can commit, the one that will make you a saint, is to die or to achieve extreme poverty or to suffer some horrible outcome while serving other people. Your purpose in life is to live for others. Take Mother Teresa, take every saint in every museum in a painting, arrows sticking through them. They're, they're all about dying in the service of other people. Which other people? What's the standard by which we should determine whether you should sacrifice for them or not? 
Well, how oppressed are they? How poor are they? How miserable are they? How suffering are they? The more suffering, the more you should sacrifice to them. Now, what does intersectionality do? Well, it creates a pyramid of suffering. It, it ranks us based on how oppressed supposedly we are. And then it demands from everybody at the upper regions of the pyramid to sacrifice for people at the other regions of the other pyramid, right? And, and of course, it blames us. It, it has original sin. That's another thing that intersectionality takes mm -hmm. from Christianity. We're all sinners, particularly if you're born with white skin. I guess, I, you know, I'm Jewish, so I have a little bit of an inter intersectionality mm -hmm. score. Yeah. I get some credit because we've been, uh, Jews are being oppressed. Right. But basically, the whole idea is the more seemingly oppressed you are, the more miserable you are, the more you failed, the more, uh, the more poor you are, the more suffering you are, the more virtuous you are, the more you deserve my sacrifice. And the more successful I am, the more sinful I must have been, the more of an oppressor I obviously am. If you're and the wrong, if you're the wrong color, though, right? Because if you're a black transsexual, non-able bodied, and you're, you know, worth a billion dollars, and you're still okay, it doesn't matter how successful you are. Well, you're somewhat okay, right? You're not quite as okay as if you are black transsexual. What did you call it? Non-able bodied, yeah. Non-able bodied, yeah. and you're poor, yeah. then you're definitely right. Uh, uh, more okay on this intersectionality criteria. So intersectionality does have a wealth parameter, but, uh, you know, so it, like Marx, but it doesn't have, uh, it, it, that isn't the dominant prima, uh, parameter. So what we have today is, is altruism um, taken to the extreme. Altruism is, is the philosophy coined, philosophical term coined by Augustine Comte, the French philosopher. It is about the purpose of life is to live for the sake of others. And the more miserable the other is, the more you owe them, the more, and the more successful you are, the more you should be put down. Uh, it is a combination of, of that with uh, racism, the identification of people based on the color of their skin and on their race, uh, with a heavy dose of nihilism. And that is basically nihilism. What characterizes nihilism is hatred of success, hatred of good, hatred of the world, really, hatred of life, and, and a desire to see everything good in the world destroyed. Uh, so when you combine all those, what you get is the modern left. And, and I would argue a little bit of the modern right as well. So I, I, I don't want to come across as just anti-left because I, 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 I have a lot of criticism of the right as well. I want to explore that in a second, but I, I'm so glad that you mentioned <laughs> that you almost sympathize more with pure Marxism than the CRT stuff, because I made this argument to a friend of mine, a uh, left-wing friend of mine, and I was like, I can't even believe I'm saying this, because as we just spoke about, communism is one of the most evil philosophies ever uh, implemented uh, and promulgated among humanity, and it's, it's re responsible for tens of millions of deaths. And I was saying, you know, I, I actually have more sympathy for the, the Chinese CCP, who uh, basically, you know, as evil as they are, and I don't want to, you know, whitewash anything like that, but they, they have an end goal in mind. They want what's best for, for China and the Han Chinese people. And they they do have, they do want to incorporate everyone into this, into this culture. Um, and with, with the CRT uh postmodern stuff it's like well no if you're born a certain way you, you have no chance it's it's not it's not even gonna work out for you at least with ec you know pure economic philosophy like marxism you know you can always come on board well, real with this marxism, you're irredeemable real marxism is irredeemable as well because real marxism right. you're born um into a class you have no free will you're de you're determined history is determined you're determined uh indeed what marx doesn't tell you but is obvious is that in order to achieve his utopia, anybody born a bourgeoisie will have to be killed because you can't change. It's not like you could change or you have to go to re-education camps. Right, so right. look, I, I don't want to whitewash anything about communism. It's evil through and through. There's only one thing more evil than communism. That is modern nihilistic egalitarianism. Mm -hmm. And egalitarianism is the idea that we should all be equal in outcome. Even the Marxists didn't pretend that that was possible. So, I, you know, the best example of egalitarianism and the ultimate 
place to which CRT and all these other intersectionality and the rest of them are, are going is what the Khmer Rouge did in Cambodia. The Khmer Rouge in Cambodia were less communist than they were committed egalitarians. What they wanted is equality of outcome. They didn't care about means of production, all of that, that didn't matter. They just wanted everybody to be equal. So if you had an education and somebody else didn't have an education, how do we make you equal? Well, we can't. So we kill everybody who has an education. If you're smarter than everybody else, uh, how do we make you equal? Well, we can't. So we just kill everybody who's smart. If you're a hard worker and everybody else is lazy, how do we make you equal? Well, we kill everybody who's a hard worker. The Khmer Rouge killed 40% of their own population, in 2 Cambodia. million, 5 million people in Cambodia, all in the name of equality, of outcome. Or to use a modern phrase, which I think is distorted, but a modern phrase, all in the name of equity. They killed 40% of their own people in the name of equity, in the name of equality of outcome, in the name of equity, the way the left today uses it. And, and nobody cares. Why not look at what equality of outcome actually leads to? It leads to death and destruction. Nothing else. No good comes of it. Uh, this is not about leveling the playing field, which I don't think you can. This, this is about equality of outcome. And equality of outcome, only death can result of that. And that's why the modern neo, uh, uh, egalitarians are much worse even than communists. And that's saying a lot because communism is about the lowest you can get in life. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.